What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here and I figured it's time for another stupid experiment. Today's video is brought to you by CableMod and the CableMod Configurator. If you want custom cables for your computer and you want them custom made with your colors and your choices and your configs, you can do that on the Cable Mod Configurator. They support all major brands of PSUs, both modular and semi-modular, and you can have cable extensions made. But the best part is, previously they offered aluminum cable combs in only black and white but now you can get them in various colors. So if you want to take your system to the next step and really make it pop, get some custom cables and make them your way with the Cable Mod Configurator. You can start playing around with that by using the link in the description below. Today, we are doing another experiment that could quite honestly end up bad and is dangerous. And you shouldn't try it at home. Why does it seem like we're always doing things that like could literally cause damage and harm? <laughs> oh, fan ads ah, called. Ben, this is a one. Fun. I'm not gonna deny that, but this is one that quite honestly could end in fire. So that's why our fire extinguishers are handy and you should not try this at home if you do. Again, your bad, not mine. So I've attended a few LAN parties in the day and it's always kind of made me like, you know what? There's an awful lot of computers and stuff plugged into these extension cords. So I'm kind of curious as to what happens if like, or where the diminishing return in terms of like power turns dirty with extension cords comes in. So what I've got right here is 325 feet of the cheapest, most unreliable, least amount of insulated Harbor Freight-ish extension cords you could possibly get. 16 gauge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our test bench here, which has our 8700K overclocked to five gigahertz and a 2080 Ti MSI Gaming X Trio graphics card, which is, is a custom card that can pull an awful lot of power. And we've got it hooked up here to our kilowatt, so I can at least keep an eye of how much watts are pulling through this. Now, for a little caveat, a lot of you guys are in other parts of the world. The United States is funny. If you guys didn't know that already, we like to call things miles and inches and all that sort of stuff. But we also use a 120 volt system here where a lot of other, especially like European countries, use like 210 or 220 or something different than what we use. 240? Is it 240? Yeah, that was just double R's. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know what? That also means that you guys get much more efficient power and you get like cleaner power to your power supplies and stuff, which we don't get. So we're gonna kind of do some testing here to see exactly where we find instabilities with this. Now, this is one of those things too where I had to make a choice of what hardware I wanted to use because this one I want kind of to be indicative of what the mainstream consumer would probably be using. Yeah, Jay, not everyone has. 8700 cases, I get that. But what I'm saying is now that you can get 32 core, 64 thread, thread rippers, and like Nebula over there, which has got two 2080 Ti's and a 9980 XE and uses a lot of power, I wanted something that's a little bit more realistic. And that's another reason why I'm doing this video. If you guys remember the season that I was on Scrapyard Wars, uh, we, when we were building the systems and we had our own little workbench and I was doing my quick overclocking because we were really running late on time, which is always the case in those types of competitions, I performed an overclock and did stability testing on our 4770K that was very, very stable. But then for the final shots, they brought in extension cords and pushed the tables together so that we could be next to each other for the final reveal. And suddenly my overclock was no longer stable. And Linus was like, oh, I thought you knew how to overclock. Ha oh, ha, we're better, ha oh. ha. And then suddenly he got unstable and he's like, I want a UPS. And he went and got a UPS and then, you know, started being, doing the cranny crybaby stuff that he normally does in Scrapyard Wars. And what we realized is both systems went completely unstable when we were running on like 100 foot extension cords across the studio. Once we went onto a UPS, extension cord to the UPS, to the computer, which conditions and basically load line balances the power going into the system, our stability came back. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm doing this as well. This extension cord right here is one that I actually made. Um, this is made with like a construction grade uh, cord. It's 12 gauge. I made it myself because I couldn't actually buy one that was this heavy duty. This was in response to everyone that was like, oh my God, you're using Romex on the ground. That is stupid dangerous. That's for in wall only. And you guys yelled at me, so I changed it. So this is what we have going straight to our fuse box over there. So this is a short cable that is of the highest quality. Okay, so um, we're gonna try to see the baseline test 10 minutes if it'll do it and not crash. All right, so it's been running for 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Absolutely no problems, no hiccups, no stutters, no nothing. It pulled a max of about 662 watts that I could see. What we also decided we want to take a look at is volts. So right now with the extension cord, it's pulling 118.3 volts. Remember, this is a 120 volt system here. 
So what we're looking at here too is as we add extension cords, how much this drops. Because what's gonna happen is as this goes down, it still needs 120 volts. So it's gonna start pulling more amps to get the volts it needs to provide the wattage that it's, being, that it's asking for. So that's sort of how the math works there. And the reason why I'm even pointing this out is it dawned on me that when I hooked up the first extension cord, I saw that say 117. So that may not seem like a lot, but you start dropping that down like 116, 115, then that starts to have a big discrepancy in terms of, of the cleanliness of the power coming because of the resistance that we're adding with the extension cord. Now, the reason why we're getting that resistance is because we're using a 16 gauge wire. If we did a 14 gauge or a 12 gauge, remember the, the lower the number, the thicker the wire, the less the resistance. So I'm using this cheap extension cord because this seems to be more so what I think an average person would run out to like the hardware store and pick up. It's just, oh, the, the cheaper one and we'll go with that and they're not thinking about these other things. So the 100 foot cable is plugged in. It says 118.6 volts. And I wanna see if that drops when I turn the system on. 117.5. 117.3, 117.1. So we're, we will probably start monitoring now that we know what the wattage is gonna be, because that wattage is gonna be the same. The system's calling for the wattage. It's like, hey, PSU, give me this watts. And the watts, the PSU's like, uh, uh, amps, give me multiplication, so. Sorry, Danny, what, what did you say? Write the dissertation in the comments to why we're, why we're complaining around, but I think we got most of the. I think the gist is there. Yes. All right, so heaven is starting up right now. It's at 117.1, it just dropped to 116.5. 114, 113, because Cinebench just started. So we're sitting at 113 volts. So we are clearly getting resistance through one wire. Well, 10 minutes passed and no crashes. So if we look at the voltage here, it actually came up slightly, 114.4. So now we are going to add, oh, I got the wrong end. All right, so it's pulling 108 point, 108.0, So it's definitely pulling about five more volts, or I should say there's about five volts res extra resistance uh, with the second 100 foot cable than we have with the one, because we were at like 113 before. Now we talked about in that previous take about appliances and stuff wanting certain ratings and how that a lot of times that's rated lower than the maximum voltage, like not everything be rated at 120 because voltage drop like this would then mean it's not running properly. Um, oh, I should probably start my timer, huh? This is a Gigabyte XP1200M power supply that we're using. It's a 1200 watt rated platinum power supply, input frequency 60 to 50 hertz. But if you look here, its input voltage is 115 to 240 VAC. What this is saying now is we are currently underneath where the voltage uh, input is for that power supply to guarantee the power that it's promising. Now, I don't think we're still gonna necessarily get any crashes out of this because in order for that to really become a problem, I think we need to be very close to the max output capability of that power supply. So it still has lots and lots of headroom. But what we wanna check here right now is whether or not we get any instabilities now by our voltage being this low. I suspect we probably will not get any crashes with the 200 foot of cable. But I suspect when we add the next 300 or the next 100 foot getting to 300, I might even just go right to adding our other spool to it to get to like 400, just to see what happens. So I mean, that also kind of shows you too though, how easy it is to get underneath or under spec or minimum spec for your components uh, just by adding two extension cords. Now, like I said in the earlier take though, if we were running a higher gauge, there's less resistance, which would mean that this would probably not droop as far as it is. So there was a lot of asterisks in this video. I'm well aware of that. But what I kind of tried to do was take the whole like, I want to play some games and we're going to a friend's house and we got to run extension cords all across the house because the power plugs and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this brings in a whole nother discussion too of overloading a single circuit on a box with plugging in multiple computers into a single plug. Maybe something else we need to try. We've got lots of computers around here that draw a lot of power. All right. 10 minutes and 25 seconds and no crashes. This is taking way too long. It's at 107.9, 108 volts. 100. 100 and it's just, I'm just calling it like, in, like Intel calls it stuff. Yeah, rounding 200 more feet. Here's the difference though. This is actually a contractor cable. This is 14 gauge. It's higher than the stuff that's here, um, but it's being bookended by shit on either side. So I'm just trying to add more resistance at this point because I'm really kind of curious and I'm gonna leave this one rolled up. Why the hell not? I'm just really sort of curious now as to if we're gonna get to a point where insta-
Accountability is gonna, <laughs> gonna happen. <laughs> Shut up, Philip. You're not perfect. Look at that. It's a full 120 volts. Still going through all this. It went up by adding that. It was like an amplifier of yeah. some sort. <laughs> no, this is definitely a don't do. Seriously, don't do this. Run. All right. So with the load starting, 111, 113, 112, 110, 108, 100, 95, 94, 94.6. Okay, we've clearly introduced resistance, but it's still full boosting to 2130. CPU is still running. All right, well, here's the timer. We're at 94 volts. <laughs> All right, so we're seven minutes in, 400 feet of extension cord, drooped all the way down to, I saw 93.9 a second ago on the, on the voltage. We're at 99 right now, because the test isn't as difficult at that portion. Seven minutes, 15 seconds in, no crash. I don't think it's gonna crash either, because this is staying fairly consistent. If it was gonna crash, I think it would happen if it were doing this and all over the place. So, you know, this is the part of Mythbusters where they make the results happen, and I have an idea. No. We're gonna take the compressor. And we're gonna plug it in to our power strip, which is underneath here for a couple of reasons. One, that's, um, that's got a breaker on it. So <laughs> for obvious reasons. And then two, we want to add more draw because here's what I started thinking. I was sitting there on the couch and I was thinking about this going, our test is fatally flawed. And the reason for that, it's plugged right into the panel. It's plugged into this cord right here. And these left two and the right two are separate. They're not going to the same circuit. That's sharing a cord right here with this black cord, which is going to this light. It's an LED. It's an LED that uses like 20 watts total, going right to its own 20 amp breaker. You see, the way that this office is laid out is it's got conduit going all the way up there. and almost fell. <laughs> I went <laughs> going all the way up there, all the way across and all the way down to the office. And then all of the office plugs, they're all daisy chains. So we've got my system running in there, fill system, the server. So I was like, well, wait a minute. The real thing is at home, you'd have TVs and you'd have other computers and you have radios and alarm clocks and all these things pulling power. You ever turn on the vacuum in your house and see your lights go and come back? That's what's happening there. All right, I'm gonna flip on the compressor. You ready? Oh, the whole system shut off. <laughs> <laughs> now what we're doing is not good for the computer. Let me start by saying that. Don't do this. So let me see now if just turning this on, under load. Under load. You ready? Yeah. Dude, the power, the compressor is like, Ugh. it's not even running full speed. 83, 83 volts. volts. Well, try to start a test, see what happens. Yeah, I bet you it crashes immediately. I applied the overclock and the compressor went <laughs> I'm trying to load heaven. It's like an audible feedback as yeah. to... <laughs> okay, so now, now what we do is we take off the extension cords. We are at 200 feet of 16 gauge with 50 feet of 14 gauge. This is contractor wire. This is the expensive stuff. All right, so let's go, well, expensiver stuff. Some contractor out there is like, Jay, no, 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 no. They can get way more expensive than that. So we'll see what it is once the CPU starts. It's at 105.5. So are you ready? If I click this on, is it gonna dirty up the power to make it stop? You tell me, because I can't see it. <laughs> Woo! Listen to the compressor. Oh, it crashed. GPU crashed. Nope, yeah, GPU crashed. So obviously we were just having some fun here, putting some really good hardware at risk uh, to kind of show you, I mean, this, I think everyone watching this video at some point has either plugged their system into an extension cord or considered it or had to at a LAN party or whatever. Extension cords are not bad. I have no doubt. Oh my God, they're warm. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Put your hand in the middle. Woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah, don't do this. Yeah, they're, they're like, this has been sitting here cooling off. Wow, okay, so remember earlier when I said this had potential for danger? Now imagine you're sitting there and it wasn't enough to crash, but you're sitting there having your gaming session. You're playing for hours and hours. That's only gonna get hotter and hotter and could potentially melt. As soon as that insulation between the wires melts and they contact, you better hope to God that your breaker handles it or you didn't do some janky sh like we did around here where we end up having like 15 amp circuit and 20 amp stuff and blah, blah, blah that we have since remedied where the breaker doesn't trip, the wires continue to melt and guess what? This happens. But extension cords aren't bad. Let me tell you what's bad. The quality variance between them. And that's the reason why this guy 
I don't feel anything. Well, let me see, put my hands down the middle. Room temp, for sure. It's not cold, it's room temp. These guys here, there was like, they're fairly cooled off now, but these, this guy right here, especially this exact one was really warm because what's varying between the extension cords is the quality of the strand, the thickness of the strand, the quality of the insulation, both inside and outside the cable. They are not created equal. So I'm not out here saying, oh yeah, run extension cords, no problem. It, a cheap extension cord is not gonna be able to handle the wear and tear of plugging in, unplugging, not fraying with all this bending rolling a chair over it and accidentally squishing it inside and then the insulation squishes apart and then the wires touch. That's what you're dealing with with extension cords. So I was just kind of curious as to what we could get away with here without blowing something up because you know we like to explode things around here um, and something I've always kind of wondered and tried because like I said I've gone to man parties where they had big extension cords but you know what? They were cords like this guy which is just as this is pretty much as capable as like Romex in your wall, only it's flexible and way insulated. And it's also 12 gauge. So anyway, PSA here from Jay's Two Cents. Extension cords aren't bad, just bad ones are.